In the control room, Mr. Brolly was ready to set off on his journey. Give me only what I simply must have, he said. Uh, uh, a toothbrush and so forth. The computer sniffed. Oh, very well, it said. If that's the way you feel. And it gave him a toothbrush and a spare pair of socks. Mr. Brolly looked at them. I meant them to be in a bag, he said. The computer was silent. Just a small bag, said Mr. Brolly. But the computer had switched itself off. Mr. Brolly was floating over the sea. The sun was shining and all was peaceful. And then a wind began to blow. It would have blown his sombrero off had he not clutched it tightly. But in clutching his hat, he let go of his socks and his toothbrush. The travellers were making their way to the ruined fort. As they went, they passed a poster stuck to a tree. Wanted, it said. Beneath the words was a picture of a bandit. Oh, he looks a bit like Mr. Brolly, said Harry. My Brolly does not look like a bandit, said Mrs. Brolly. My Brolly is the gentlest, kindest man you could ever hope to meet. Mr. Brolly came down in the ruined fort, and he was holding one sock, which was all that remained of his luggage. Oh, drat that computer, said Mr. Brolly. The travellers were in the little boat, making their way over the lake to the island of the ruined fort. No one seemed to notice the black storm clouds on the horizon. The little boat was tossing wildly on the lake as the storm raged all around. Harry and Mrs. Brolly clung to the sides of the boat. Wilkins had turned green and the camera had folded up its long legs. Only the little thundercloud was happy. The little boat was drawn up on the shores of the island. The travellers shaken but safe, stood in a group, looking around. The little cloud hovered above their heads. He had had a wonderful time. Bubba, he said. Bubba, bang, bang. He says he enjoyed it very much, thank you, said Harry. Oh, indeed, said Mrs. Brolly. And then she smiled. At least we didn't lose our luggage, she said. That is the worst thing that can happen to one on holiday, to lose one's luggage. They stood for a moment longer to catch their breath, and the camera took a photograph. Then, as everyone slowly made their way along the narrow, winding path, it ran ahead on its long legs. In the fort, Mr. Brolly peeped over the broken wall and watched the travellers wending their way towards him. Oh, how utterly surprised they'll be to see me, he said. How delighted. He struck a pose and began to practice what he would say in greeting. See, si, muchachas, it is I, Brolly, the bold bandit. <laughs> that should raise a smile, he added, pleased with the idea. At that moment, the camera entered the fort. Woo! Snicket, it said, on seeing Brolly. Woo! Bandit's boot. Snicket. Woo! Moustache. Snicket. Woo! Back view. Snicket. Oh, stop! cried poor Brolly, flapping his hands at the camera as though it were a large insect. Why are you acting like this? He grabbed the camera by its three legs and held it tight. And this is the scene which met the startled gaze of the travellers as they entered the fort. The bandit! But the little cloud bravely threw the largest bumper. He... Oh, Brolly! said Mrs. Brolly, recognising her husband at last. Night had fallen, and Mrs. Brolly had made a picnic supper. Everything she needed, she found in the trunk. Mr. Brolly sat and watched all this. I wish I had brought a trunk now. Oh, Brolly, 
What a wild, carefree fellow you are, sighed Mrs. Prolly, to venture all this way with so little. And at this, the music from the trunk struck up once more. But as the Brollies danced by, Harry suddenly remembered the umbrellas, which they had left behind on the signpost. How will we go home? he said. Then, as the dancers passed by once more, Mr. Brolly opened his umbrella, and Mrs. Brolly reached out and took Harry's hand, and so they went, floating up together, and followed by Wilkins, the little cloud, the camera, and the trunks. Harry awoke beneath his patchwork quilt. Outside, the day was grey, but the sunshine was making its way through the clouds. In the shaft of light, Harry could see what he thought were two large birds winging their way towards him. But as they drew near, he saw that they were not birds, but the lost umbrellas making their way home. Quack, they said as they flew. Quack. 